Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a review for the icons in FIFA 19. Now I did uh, zoom this in a little bit, so let me go ahead and zoom this back out so we can have a little bit more minimized. Uh, not too minimized though, because we obviously want you guys to be able to see the things. So we're going to go ahead and review the players. Uh, I think this year is going to be very different from last year because I think in last year's game, if you use someone like uh, Andrei Shevchenko and stuff like they wouldn't necessarily be ideal players to use um, and they weren't really usable either right so with this year's game obviously there's still going to be a meta right the Pele's the Maradona's the the uh, Paolo Maldini's the Ronaldo's those guys are still going to be uh, the legends that you're obviously going to want to get but if you were to get someone uh, like an Andrei Shevchenko or like someone uh, Van Nistroy right someone like Van Nistroy uh, these players will be very usable this year, right? Last year, they just they weren't usable because they didn't offer anything. Now in this game, like the way that the the pace of the game is and the way that the the dribbling affects players, the way that the attack affects players, they're actually very usable this year. So we're gonna go ahead and review uh, some of the cards here. So first off, we have Pele. So right off the bat, we already know that Pele is going to be an incredible card because if we look at his stats, right? He's going to be five foot eight with a four star weak foot and five star skill moves. So that's obviously going to be very good off the bat. Uh, acceleration sprints be 95 95. So you don't necessarily need to improve that because it's already amazing. Uh, a card like this, you'd want to make his shooting as perfect as possible, in my opinion. Uh, and then obviously make his dribbling as perfect as possible because his pace is already high up there. And improving his passing wouldn't really do much for him. So if I was going to give us a, uh, a card to him, I'd give him a sniper to improve the dribbling and the shooting because. Uh, they nerfed Hunter this year, so you can see what it improves to. So it can be basically all 99. He could be basically all 99 in the shooting department as well, right? You want to be as perfect as possible because he does have a four-star weak foot, not a five-star. Um, but Pele's card looks awesome. He's basically the perfect card. Um, the only thing that he's obviously missing is the physicality. Physicality will always be important in FIFA, but in this year's game, if you have stats that kind of uh, make up for the physicality loss that you that a player doesn't have like for instance Neymar is not necessarily a physical player But Neymar is probably one of the better players in FIFA 19 because of the way that the game mechanics work, right? So um, Again doesn't really have aggression and strength that much But again Pele is the type of card that has fantastic dribbling stats uh, Fantastic pace fantastic shooting and fantastic passing so he's obviously gonna be a beast and obviously he's a cam so him being a cam kind of makes the situation even better because you can make him a center mid, you can make him uh, a cam, you can make him a striker, a center forward, you can rotate uh, a lot with him in your squad. So he'll be a very, very good card. Uh, Diego Maradona, as long as he has at least a three-star weak foot, yeah, so this card's going to be amazing too because I think three-star weak foot last year was kind of was it wasn't ideal, but three-star weak foot this year is pretty decent because of the way that the players finish now. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but when a player does a finesse shot, or when you go for a finesse shot, sometimes what your player will actually do is he'll uh, he'll do an outside the foot finesse shot, right? So someone like Maradona, if you look at his traits, he actually has uh, avoids using the weaker foot, which in certain situations could be a bad thing. So you know, if you're on the right side, you can't really do driven shots across goal, even though he's still going to be pretty solid in, at them because his finishing and shot power and all those things is still very good. Um, his acceleration, sprint speed. Again, fantastic. Shooting stats are very good, but his shot power is low, right? So when you see stuff like that, you pop a sniper on them. Or you see how his shot power is too low and sniper doesn't affect his shot power. You would go ahead and put a dead eye on him because dead eye, you know, he already has amazing dribbling stats. So make his passing even better and make his shooting even better. Dead eye might actually be preferable to have on Pele as well because his, his agility and bounce is already very good too, right? So... Um, yeah, another fantastic card. And this card actually has physical, which is great. But he is five foot five, so they need to add a little bit of physical to his card uh, to kind of make it, I guess, play better. Uh, I'm sorry if I keep touching my arms, guys, because I started going to the gym recently and my arms are killing me. So if you see me doing this a lot with my arms, it's just because it's like super sore. But uh, physicality-wise, 76 physical is very good. Aggression, strength, stamina is very good. He's going to have a good balance on the ball. Balance, I've noticed in this year's game, is very key to uh, finishing, right? So if your player is off balance and his composure is low, then he's not going to obviously finish a lot of opportunities. So again, another very good card. I'm uh, just going to get a drink of water right here. Next card we have here is Ronaldo. We obviously know Ronaldo is going to be a god for sure because 
you can see right here his balance is low, so right off the bat, again, with the, as a striker, his striking abilities is already fantastic, right? And he has a five star, five star. So with him, if you give him dead eye, it would make sense, right? But at the same time, right? Like when you look at dead eye, the reason why passing is more of a relevant stat this year is because there's certain passes that players make that it's really well weighted. Like if you do like a certain Y pass, for instance, right? They 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 weight the pass really nicely so that a player can be through on goal, so on and so forth. If you have Ronaldo up top, right? Obviously he's a big dude, right? So he's six foot tall. Uh, he has 85 strength but 47 aggression, which doesn't really matter because he has 85 strength with 97 acceleration, 97 sprint speed. Um, this card's gonna play fantastic. But with Ronaldo, you know, obviously. If you truly, truly want to upgrade this card as much as possible. I don't know which one actually gives him... I don't know if dribbling and passing is a stat. I feel like it is, but I just don't know which one it would be. If it's artist, it might be artist. Yeah, so artist might be the most ideal thing to give him. Because if you notice with artist, it increases his balance. And balance is really important, like I said, right? So his composure is already very good. So if you increase... Uh, him to an artist his passing will be significantly improved and then he's also going to have um, the dribbling stats to be really nice as well because the the, the sprint speed you're not going to notice the difference by a plus two right and the finishing uh finishing is harder this year uh and you may want to give him just um, a dead eye card to improve his finishing as much as possible or a sniper because a sniper would improve his finishing and his um his dribbling but if you look at the finishing department right it's just plus four in, in positioning, plus one in finishing, plus three in volleys, and plus 10 in penalties. Penalties, penalties don't matter if it's a 99 or an 89 because you're just going to hit a spot. And if the goalie saves it, the goalie saves it, right? So because these there, there's more of a significant boost with uh, improving uh, the passing department, you want to do that more because this is already going to be really good. Uh, but if you, again, if you feel like your Ronaldo's missing too many opportunities, increase this as much as possible, right? So just depends on you. But this card's going to be amazing as well. Um, next card we have here, Paolo Maldini. So obviously he's going to be a beast. Probably going to be the one of the more uh, meta cards. My voice is cracking so much today. I don't know why. He's going to be one of the more meta cards. So four star weak foot is obviously fantastic with seventy five passing, eighty six pace, ninety six defending, eighty three physical. Uh, the thing that's always important with center backs uh, in general is their agility, balance, acceleration, sprint speed together. Um, this year is not as bad as last year in terms of that, though, because this year uh, I feel like acceleration and sprint speed is actually more relevant. But when a person has good agility and balance, it just allows them to turn quicker, right? Because that agility and balance is actually is actually decent considering that he's six foot one. So the lower the height goes right? The more the agility and balance doesn't affect it too much. Like if I have like 75 agility and 75 balance, but my player is like five foot eight, it's not going to really affect his agility on the ball because he's a shorter player, right? Um, but because he's six foot one, he's going to be fantastic, obviously, right? He has 84 jumping while being six foot one, which to be honest, for the best version of the icon card, isn't necessarily that great. But he's six foot one, but he's also big, right? So it's the physical stature in game that's going to be the big thing. His defending stats are obviously incredible. If I were to give him a card, uh, his defending is already very, very good. So I'd probably try to increase the physical as much as possible. Um, but you know, it wouldn't really work that much. So you know, you could probably just give him an anchor card. It gives him it gives him significant stat boosts in jumping, strength, aggression, um, defending to be perfect essentially. Because they, the AI still makes those tackles at time, from time to time. But we'll see from the first patch if they're going to actually end up changing that. If they end up changing that, then obviously this is still going to be incredible to do uh, when you do it all manually, right? So I get another very good card. One thing I forgot to see is his work rates, which is obviously important too. So his work rates, I like his work rates a lot. I feel like medium high is a good work rate this year because low high is too conservative whereas medium high is just right in terms of putting certain pressure on against the uh, opposition when defending so very very good card um next card we got here is yashin obviously the downgraded versions i'm not going to be reviewing i'm just going to be reviewing the the bigger ones because the downgraded versions aren't too significantly different to the higher ones uh normally it's only with players like uh, Ronaldinho possibly. Thierry Henry will have a little bit of a stat decrease, but he'll still be a, uh, a good card in general. Uh, but I, I am just going to be reviewing the primes, right? So uh, next card we have here is a new one, uh, which is Johan Cruyff. I think Johan Cruyff is probably full meta because he's going to have 
uh, 5'11", so obviously his balance is 82, so you want to increase that. I would probably increase his shooting ability too. Uh, I don't think this actually increases his shot power, so it might not be ideal. No, I think it's still... No, mm, shot power is 84, but he's 5-star, five 5-star, five so that's already pretty good to be honest. Uh, his passing is already really good too, so it's, it's a little bit of a tricky situation. If you give him a Hunter, they don't increase Hunter that They don't increase pace that much. So a 6 and a 10, but then they increase his shot power and stuff. But then you're, you're, you're lacking with the balance part because you may want to upgrade the balance. Depends on how the card plays. But obviously, he has a lot of stats where the balance might not be relevant because now that he has like higher than 90s in reactions, agility, and all that stuff, it might not be noticeable on the card, right? Because it's the same thing with like Ronaldo, right? If you look at Ronaldo's card, his balance is, has always been poor. But he has dribbling stats and traits that makes up for it, right? Uh, with his traits, he has... Uh, outside foot shot, so that's great. So I think he's forced. He's a he's a right footed player. So outside foot shots gonna be awesome to do with him because he'll even do the long shots outside the box with them. Uh, and then the other trait that he has is flair. So flair is pretty typical. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and search the rest of the traits for these guys because I totally forgot to look at them. Finesse shot trait is very big because finesse shots outside the 18 yard box are really effective. So that's gonna be amazing to have for Pele. Diego Maradona will have the finesse shot as well probably. Uh, yep, and he has flair, and then takes free uh, trait takes finesse free kicks. I don't like this because I take free kicks in a different way, so I wouldn't put him on the free kicks. Uh, Ronaldo probably has uh, beats defensive line or something. Yeah, tries to beat the defensive line. So if you uh, if you keep him on balanced, you don't necessarily need to tell him to get him behind because he'll try to beat that defensive line, right? So pretty good trait as well. Trait finesse shot too, so he'll be uh, really effective as well because finesse shot trait is always really really nice to have. Um, and I skipped over Ronaldinho, I think. Yeah, I did skip over Ronaldinho. Okay, so Ronaldinho is the new one. Um, this card looks fantastic as well. Big physical stature in game. 5'11", 4-star weak foot, 5-star skills. Good pace, good shooting. Uh, shooting is a little bit uh, lacking over here in this department, so obviously you want to give him that sniper because his shot power is already 86, so that's fine. But, you know, make his dribbling as good as possible. Make his... Uh, shooting as good as possible because his passing is already very good. But then again, if you feel like your shooting is already top notch and your dribbling is already top notch, uh, then it's better to just increase his uh, his uh, passing accuracy. So his long passing and his short passing could be improved because these things are already really high up. So you'll notice them being really good right off the bat, right? So, but a left wing card that's five star, four star is nice to have. Right footed. So if you want to cut inside and do a finesse shot with him, uh, he'll be able to do it because he has the finesse shot trait. Um, Players who don't have the finesse shot trait, they can still take finesse shots really well, just not as accurate, uh, accurately, right? So there's actually, it's a very small but very noticeable animation that the player does in-game when they have the finesse shot trait. It's just the shot seems to have more precision behind it, right? It seems to have more precision and power behind it. So that's like the important thing with it. So um, I like sniper chemistry style in this game because I feel like, Dribbling needs to improve. Needs to be improved to the maximum capability that a player can be, because uh, the touches are a little bit more heavy this year. So it's nice to improve the dribbling so that the players are quicker on the ball uh, when they need to move around the pitch, right? So, um, next thing that we have here is Marco Van Basten. So these are the types of cards, right? Where this year he'll actually be a very effective card. So if you're playing him uh, in a two striker formation. He'll actually play the role really well. And if he plays as a lone striker, depending on your play style, he can play that role really well too. Now, the problem with him playing as a lone striker is the fact that his passing stats aren't great. So you want, if you're playing a lone striker, you obviously want to have good passing stats so that when you want to make that extra pass to the sides and you don't want to have to take the extra touch and do a first-time pass right away, uh, someone like Van Bastion may not be able to do that for you right off the bat. Um, but yeah, his balance is 74. Again, not great. But where... Van Bastion really, like, really, really excels is uh, is the uh, finishing department, right? So his finishing is obviously incredible. Look at his finishing stats. You don't really need to improve that. Uh, with dribbling being low and passing being low, you can obviously improve that as well because the pace is not necessarily something you need to really improve. But if you give him a sniper card, his dribbling will significantly be improved. Uh, but I think the one you would want to give him is Artist, which improves his dribbling and his passing. So his his passing is a little bit better. So if you give him an Artist card and you're playing him as a lone striker, he can actually pass the ball decently well. Uh, and he'll basically be a god at winning the ball in the air because that's where his... 
kind of play style revolves around, right? 85 jumping while being six foot two and being a big guy in game with 90 heading accuracy is going to be really nice to use Van Bastion. So a, a usable card, medium, medium work rates is perfect for that st- style of play. Um, a usable card. He has decent physical. His strength is 82. His aggression is not necessarily there, but you know, the aggression is important when you're chasing after a ball, right? So that's when it's like a really, really important stat, but it's a usable card, right? Last year, this card would just be irrelevant because the play styles of last year were very, very different. Like you need, you needed to be fast and agile to get into the box, but now it's just about like hold up play, looking for the right pass, so on and so forth, right? So uh, next player we got here is Lothar Mateus. Lothar Mateus is obviously going to be a fantastic card to use in this game. Agility and balance was more noticeable last year than it is this year, right? So uh, with his card, uh, if you're going to be using him as a CDM, he's not necessarily going to win the, win the, win the ball that often for you. 74 jumping with five foot nine, He will be able to win the ball, just not against people who have a more meta uh, midfield, right? Uh, but he's going to be a fantastic card to use. If you use him in a 4 one 2 and 2 as a right center mid, uh, right footed with a 4 star weak foot is really, really nice. High, high work rates, amazing, right? Um, normally for me, uh, because his shooting stats is already very good, I would probably actually still give him a sniper, possibly. Because the thing about the center mids in this game is that if you improve their shooting as much as possible and you improve their dribbling as much as possible and they have like decent physical and defensive stats, then they're fine. But Mateus is a type of card that as you play with him, you'll realize what your play style is more than anything. And if your center mids don't really get inside the box or outside the box to take a shot or that's not really your play style, it might be uh, preferable to get a sentinel on him if you're a more defensive type player. Because again, the agility and balance you're not going to notice too much because his acceleration sprint speed is already quite nice. Uh, acceleration being bigger than sprint speed is more important this year for sure. Uh, so agility being 77 and balance being 81 is already pretty nice uh, because if you improve his defensive capabilities, 80 uh, plus 10 on the jumping is going to definitely help a lot. The plus 10 in strength, aggression, so on and so forth, going to be very, very helpful. It's always nice to have height if you're going to be choosing to play a player like this uh, in the CDM role, but obviously you can't have everything to be perfect, right? Uh, George Best has made his return into FIFA, which is very, very nice. Uh, Two million coins so far for him is actually, its I wouldn't say it's cheap, right? It's just cheap for FIFA sense uh, because two million coins, I mean, dude, to be honest, this year, because of uh, division rivals and stuff, it's, it's very possible to get a card like this, like, somewhat early in the game through playing games or trading if you trade in fifa that's where you make like a lot of money right if you're very good at doing all that transfer market stuff but i'm not very good at transfer market stuff i just like to play the gameplay part and build up my team that way because the the transfer menu i wouldn't say it's a boring part but it's not necessarily an ideal part for me i like to play the gameplay stuff right uh but with george best his shooting isn't necessarily too up there, so you may want to give him a sniper to improve. His, his dribbling is already quite nice, actually. You actually might want to improve his passing, his shooting and his passing. So that would be dead eye, right? So if you give him a dead eye, you'd improve his short passing. Long passing means 79 is not a big deal. Right wing player, um, he's okay in that situation. Even if you want, because his shooting is already quite nice, too, because I think he's four star, four star. He is. Uh, even if you want to, you can also give him um, an engine would be okay too. A plus five in the pace wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing because putting acceleration higher is really nice because it makes your player um, like you know when you're dribbling normally and you and then you hold right trigger at that very moment and he kind of accelerates with the ball. Very nice to have that, especially since he's ninety nine ninety nine. He'll be he'll be moving really quickly because he is also five foot nine. And again, guys, height plays a really big part in terms of whether or not players play nicely in the game uh, in certain situations. Depends on their characteristics, right? Um, but again, another very fantastic card. He's actually good at jumping in the air with good heading accuracy as well. So if you don't want to do those crosses across uh, across goal and try to get goals that way, he'll be very good at it. He has 88 volley, so obviously, again, he'll be very good at finishing because whether you play him on the right or left side, depending on what your dynamic tactic is, he'll be okay, right? Uh, right wing on the right side with a, force, with a, a right foot, Already very nice, right? So another very, very good card. There's a lot of uh, prime icons this year that are actually very good, and I might not be able to get through them all uh, with you guys. So if you guys want to see a second video uh, for more of the prime icons, uh, I'll be sure to do so, right? Uh, next card we have is Rude Hullet. Obviously, Rude Hullet's going to be an absolute god in the midfield, right? Uh, I think 
the ideal thing to use Rude Hullet is, even though he's high attacking and, and medium defensive, is that I really need to use this guy as a CDM. CDM, like, after using Bakayoko, right? So Bakayoko's out of position sometimes because of, the, because of the high medium work rates. But having someone who's six foot three, big dude in game, 86 jumping, 95 heading accuracy, just good defensive stats in general. So, like, to be honest with, with me, I would probably give him a shadow card. Um... Because his physical is already absolutely god tier, right? But if you give him a shadow card, shadow card, I'm so blind. Shadow card would improve his defending quite a bit. And defending stats are going to be very important this year again, obviously, for the midfielders, especially for the CDM position. Being able to intercept the ball at 91 interceptions while being six foot three with a four star weak foot, five star weak foot, sorry, it's just an amazing card, right? The agility and bounce, you're not going to notice too much again because. It's not too noticeable in this game. The balance is more noticeable than the agility, and his dribbling stats are already very nice. So he'll just be a fantastic card. I, I probably wouldn't use him as a center forward, although he would play that role like an absolute god because, look, this is me deciding to use him in a more defensive way. You want to use him in a more attacking way? 86 pace, right? Shooting is maybe not that great. I, honestly, come to think of it again, I think this would be an ideal cam as well. But I feel like you can actually get better... Uh, I don't know. Physical presence would be very good because you can get some good CDMs nowadays. There's Claude Makalele, Patrick Vieira. Um, I think Claude... Claude Makalele is is uh, an all-time favorite of mine, right? He's the, like the top three player. It's Ronaldinho, Makalele, and Quaresma. But the thing about Makalele's card, and we'll see it in a bit, is I think his shooting is low. So obviously you want to have the full meta when you're using any player, because no matter what, your CDM will always find a position on the pitch where he wants to exploit. So it's going to happen eventually, right? Where he pushes up and you're going to need to shoot with him. And because Claude McAlele has like 50 something shooting, not necessarily ideal, right? So, uh, but if you want to use uh, Rude Hullet in a more attacking sense, uh, probably giving him an engine would probably be the best solution because that's the one that increases the pace, the dribbling as well. Um, so with engine, you would increase his pace to it to the 90s, his dribbling to the to the 80, uh, 97s, plus 10 in the balance, right? So that's gonna be very noticeable. Uh, plus five of the passing, but his passing is already really good. Like for me personally, I want to make that finishing as high as possible, right? So if I were to give him uh, a hunter card, right, you could see that the pace increase and the shooting increase, the the agility and the balance and so on and so forth isn't great. Uh, his pace is already quite nice, to be honest. So if you really wanted to, Sniper might be the most ideal. Because again, the, like this part right here, playing as a central cam, it's not like too noticeable with a card like that. But there are going to be moments where you're going to be through on goal. But he's strong, so he actually might be able to get through people, right? But again, if you want to increase his dribbling and his shooting, probably the best decision to do all of this, right? Um, uh, Franco Baresi, a legend in his own right. Center back, 70 pace, 95 defending, 82 physical, 96... Here's the reason why these players are better to use in terms of a, a more usable approach. Now, obviously for meta, it sucks that he's five foot nine with 82 jumping. That's just not high enough, right? But if you were to get Badezi and you were uh, a fan of his back in the day, he's what? He's, uh, he's uh, how old is this guy? He's 58 years old. So you would have to be around like around your the age of 30 now to really have seen him play back in the day so if you're a fan of Badezi in that regard he'll be a usable card but he won't be ideal right so crossing wise he's not going to do great uh positioning wise he'll be okay in defensive in the defensive front uh moving left and right he'll be okay his acceleration is not high enough uh but because it's not high enough you could just give him i wonder if there's i don't think there's a card that gives you physical and pace I don't think that there is Architect, Powerhouse, Maestro. Maestro is actually a really good card to give someone too. Yeah, Maestro is a great card to give someone this year. Dribbling, shooting, and passing. You know what? I forgot about Maestro. I would definitely take that into consideration uh, for future upgrades, guys. Powerhouse is passing and defending. Architect, Marksman. Marksman's a good card too. Physical, shooting, and dribbling. That's a fantastic card as well. Uh, because again, pace is... The in increasing pace is not like a completely noticeable thing this year. Uh, Dead eye, finisher, sniper. Yeah, so you can't really do that. Even basic is nice. If you keep rude hullet on a basic, like let's go back to rude hullet. If you go, if you keep rude hullet on a basic this year, 
pretty good to be honest but obviously his defending and pace is the one that's low so those are probably the ones you want to upgrade the most but look look what happens when you give him a basic card look at the look at the card stats he looks fantastic he looks like an absolute monster so take that into consideration too ba basic is definitely a good card to use if a player is already kind of uh well-rounded right um Thierry Henry obviously going to be a beast I like Thierry Henry because he has to beat the, uh, beats the defensive line and that trait is so noticeable on someone like Thierry Henry uh, so he's going to be an absolute monster. 66 balance, but again, he plays very similar to Ronaldo. So he's going to be an absolute monster, right? So if you see his info, he has 4 star, 4 star, 6 foot 2. 6 foot 2 height, 90 agility is quite nice. 94 acceleration, 94 sprint speed. Really, really nice shooting stats. Passing isn't there and dribbling isn't there. So to be honest with you guys, I would definitely give him a sniper. I want to improve that balance. I think... This one doesn't improve it uh, by that much, but it improves his finishing by a lot, volleys by a lot, so on and so forth. So I'm, it might be ideal to use this. There was the one that was Maestro, or it was, um, what was the one that was Marksman, right? So Marksman improves his physical shooting and dribbling department. So that's also very nice, but it doesn't touch his balance in that regard. Uh, so something like Artist only gives him a plus five in the balance as well. I'm trying to look for a card that would do a plus 10. So if you use Engine on him, Engine would not improve his finishing, but it would improve his pace, his dribbling, and um, his passing. If you give him an engine, it's more noticeable on it because uh, if you get plus 10s on these certain areas except for balance, it's not as noticeable. But if you give him a, an engine, uh, he's going to play really nicely. Um, trying to figure out a way to get more than a plus 10 on him, but I don't think there actually is a way except for engine. I think engine is actually the only card that actually might give him that boost in the balance department yeah so engine will give him that boost and balance so that he'll move around the ball really nicely passing will be improved with it as well so marksman is definitely uh, a card to look after if you do end up buying this card plus 10 in the jumping while being six foot two with 85 heading accuracy is really nice too so it might be the best card to use uh by the looks of it because again even if the balance is 66 he's his characteristic is that he still plays really nicely as a striker so his pace is already really high up there really good traits in general he'll be a fantastic card to use i'll stop all the way until a zebu and then if you guys want me to review the rest of these cards i'll be i'll be sure to do that too uh roberto baggio uh, another legend in his own right back in the day uh very usable card this year don't worry about the shot power being low because you can just slap a nice little uh a nice little hunter on that give him a plus 10 and then a plus everything else in the dribbling because look his passing and his pay and his dribbling is already fantastic right so it would probably be the most ideal thing to give him a hunter this year so you can get that plus 10 on the shot power plus 10 and plus 10 in uh acceleration and sprint speed so a very good card as well if we look at his traits uh finesse shot trait set play specialist don't really know how he sets up on the free kick but we'll check that out uh and then takes finesse style free kicks it's funny because a card like baggio because he has the set play specialist he actually might take free kicks in a better way i'm not really sure like the free kick tactics and stuff but um, we'll see how it is. It might actually just be like how he directly takes the free kicks. I'm so happy Luis Figo is back in this game because he has a freaking amazing. I'm gonna I'm going up to Luis Figo because I love that card. Um, uh, next card is a Zebu, one of the best players of all time, and uh, like in general and as a Portuguese player, uh, completely just revolutionized Befica and everything. Uh, acceleration, sprint speed, 93. Just uh, just a perfect card. Look, five star weak foot. This card. Literally, there's nothing wrong with this card. There's there's just nothing wrong. Everything is just fantastic. Yeah, he doesn't have the physical. He's five foot nine, but it doesn't matter. He's gonna move like an absolute monster. He's just he's just perfect. Like look at this card. Like the passing, you're not gonna notice a huge difference. You can improve it if you really want to, but you're just not gonna notice a huge difference. Uh, dribbling, physical. Like dude, honestly, bam. Give him that physical boost. Right, five and five plus ten. You give him the shooting boost. You give him the dribbling boost. Just a fantastic card, man. This this card is just disgusting. Let me see what traits he actually has. Uh, trait power free kick. So he he goes long, which isn't ideal to be honest. Uh, set play specialist. So don't really know what that does. Something I have to f experiment in the game. Carl Puyol. Uh, passing. I don't know why it's still that low because he used to play in a Barcelona era where their passing was just on another level, but. An, an okay card to use, right? Not necessarily an ideal card. That's why he's 590k, right? But he's still going to be usable because this year, these types of center backs are definitely more usable. Like, you've never seen a Godin last year, but this year, if he gets some upgrades, you'll definitely see him in some squads here and there for sure. 
Uh, and last but not least for this video, Luis Figu. Just look at this card. Another card that just looks perfect, right? His dribbling is really good. Uh, I'd probably slap a nice little sniper on him because I don't really care about improve, improving his passing that much. His finishing and stuff, definitely want to improve that. But, like, look at this card. Four-star, four-star. Right-footed on the right side. 5'11". High attacking, low defensive. Which, to be honest works more as a 4-3-3 than it does for a 4-2-3-1 because in 4-2-3-1 you kind of want your wingers to come back at times right so it might not necessarily be ideal with a 4-2-3-1 but if you're using a 4-3-3 he'll be an absolute god man outside the foot shot which is incredible and uh that's pretty much it flair is nice to have but not necessarily like a crazy thing to have um his dribbling is it doesn't need to be improved that much so again if you want to give him a if you want to slap a nice little uh, marksman on him uh, to improve his physical presence in the game, that'll also be very good because legends in general they give them big physical stature so that they're significantly better than your average Joe. Uh, so again, another very good card. But that is going to conclude the video for today, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys want to see a part two of the review for the um, prime icons in the game, uh, I'll be sure to do that uh, in another video. But for now, we are going to end it there. If you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a thumbs up on it. Definitely helps out the channel a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.